What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, um, the stories for Quantumania continue to come out. Um, there was apparently, Brian, I didn't know, I, I kept on hearing about this, that there was a deleted scene, and there was some YouTubers talking about it. I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, you wanted to talk about it because there seems to be some... Um, uh, interest in this and what could have been or whatever so so could you uh let us know what this deleted hope story was so jeff loveness who's the writer of quantum mania and the writer of king dynasty he's been hitting the interview circuit hard as as quantum mania has come out and obviously has struggled mightily at the box office and you know generally not been well received by critics and less well received by audiences than usual and so then Anytime that starts to happen, you start to get the like, well, well you know, what, what was going on behind the scenes and what did we miss and what, what could have been. So one of the things that I think, you know, we did our review and I think we were probably pretty representative of people's reactions to Evangeline Lilly's lack of a part really in this movie. Like you kind of threw it in at the end of your review. Like, what about hope? And I was like, yeah, it's kind of appropriate. Like, why would we talk about her? She didn't really have anything to do. We kind of got the, we got the montage at the beginning and like, oh, she's got a new haircut. That's nice. And then. You know, she'd pop up in a few action set pieces as like a rescue vehicle, and that was it. But we find out from Loveness that there was a fairly major multiversal storyline for the Wasp that never made it out of the editing room, in which Hope, with her old haircut, shot scenes with two children believed to be hers in a different universe. And Loveness said it was hard to let go of that part of the story, but he was hoping that it might resurface what bro what are you talking about man someday maybe even in kang dynasty and he said quote there was hope's perspective on the multiverse the possibility and things like that so you never know what might come back around in an avengers movie down the road but i can't say too much more bro, i'm out man does that feel too wanda and her children from multiverse of madness like what what um I don't care. I'm good with not seeing anything regarding. I, I'm really, I'm really not interested. So I'm glad that it was left out because it would have been more the same. And where would that go? I mean, we're not. We've never been interested in the wasp. The only time we've been interested in was Head Ping was beating her up in the comics, or was it was it him that that slapped her up, or it was it was um Scott Lang. There was some domestic violence uh, situation going on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's. Oh no, it's Hank, right? Is it? Yeah, Hank I think it was Hank? Hank. I think I think it was Hank. It's Hank who actually had that issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But other than Brian, other than that, Brian, I'm not interested, man. You know, I, I want to get back to like, I don't know, Brian. I, 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 right now, the, the the way the MCU is running things right now, and how they are are choosing to say some of the things that they say regarding these films and how big these films and comparing mm. it to this, it's just like, Great. stop, stop. Well, it's crazy too, because like with Ant-Man, you know, leading up to Ant-Man 3, the entire promotional pitch from director Peyton Reed was, you know, we're not doing quantum media unless we get to do something that's like an Avengers scale project, which is how this was promoted. And I sent you this, this blurb, which is related to this article. We're like within two weeks because the box office is, is struggling. Peyton Reed is now out there saying, well, we've already got ideas for Ant-Man 4 and we're, we're going smaller. We're going back to the roots of the cat. I'm like, yo, that's the fastest course correction and backtrack. To us. It's like you're Homer Simpson going into the hedge. Like what, what, <laughs> like you're the same dude who was like, I want the scale. I want the grand entrance of Kang. And like, now you're like, well, we forgot. We, now we got to go back to what Ant-Man was and Ant-Man wanted to because the audience didn't respond to Ant-Man. It's just, that's not a good sign, man, when that stuff's going on. Reboot. That's all you got to say. Listen, it'll be crazy if Paul Rudd says, I don't want to come back. Well, now after weekend two, so something you and I were speculating on that is now going to come to pass. The box office for this is not going to match Ant-Man 2 because of the second weekend. It's now tracking below. I was going to ask you that. Kang's introduction. It, it, why? 
Why are we even talking about Ant-Man 4, period, if that's the case? It's like serving me a whack dinner and telling me we got our second course coming out. I'm like, I don't want the second course. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, stop it, yo. That's it. You, you had your chance. And you blew it. You blew it. I don't know, man. It's tough. That's it's, it, it, This is a tough situation. It, no matter how much we talk about it, Brian, and because you said it, Marvel's in trouble. And we keep saying it. It's going to turn into Marvel's in trouble till Marvel is done. Or taking a long break to regroup. But that's the thing, like, they know... <clears throat> They're getting louder and louder feedback from the audience and the critics that there is a problem. So I find it hard to believe that inside the room, they're completely dark to that. But when I see the talk that they're gearing up for things like Eternals 2, when they're already talking about Ant-Man 4, I fail to see how those are the solutions to these problems. That smells more like ego. That smells more like we're doubling down on things that didn't work and we're going to try to tweak them and make you, the audience, understand what you didn't appreciate the last time out. And what it reminds me of, unfortunately, and I granted this will be a draconian comparison. It's not totally fair. But what it reminds me of is, again, people forget what sequels used to be. We got so used to like sequels getting bigger and better and more awesome leading into things like Endgame. You know, Sequels used to become Quest for Peace. That's what used to happen. They used to become Batman and Robin. That's what used to happen to franchises. It used to be like, how many death wishes did Charles Bronson do? Like, <laughs> that's what used to happen <laughs> to franchises. Yeah, they would yeah. be literally one foot in the grave and they'd put one more out and the audience would not care at all and be like, why does this even exist? And it would be so unwatchable. Nobody would, it would become the butt of a joke. No, please, 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 no. So I'm not saying we're there, but I'm saying when I hear ideas like this, it, it does tell me that like the message is not getting through to the degree it needs to, I think, which is they need, as I said, they need new heroes, new ideas, ways to reinvigorate. And Ant-Man 4 and Eternals 2, like that's not, that's not, that's not surefire gold. Brian, you said somebody might have to go down for this. You think that's going to happen? Well, I mean, for like Eternals 2, I still will be surprised if Chloe Zhao comes back. Like that would seem like if you're going to do Eternals 2, don't you need to kind of reassess the characters and maybe rewrite them and rethink them? And So like in the case of Ant-Man, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like Peyton Reed's generally been good for you. Um, he's been good to Disney. He's done. He's directed some Mandalorian, written some Mandalorian as well. Like, I don't know if you just cut him loose, but I, I guess for me, if I was, well, I was trying to think about like where would you hold someone accountable? I think I'd put a co-writer on Kang Dynasty. Is what I would do right now. Like after what we got in Quantum Mania. And I see Loveness out there defend. I mean, he's pretty in this article, which is on Hollywood Reporter. He is ardently defending his ideas from Quantumania. He's basically touting how awesome Modoc is and how the family is written, how Cassie's written. And I'm like, dude, you you're kind of on an island, man. Like, take the feedback, and like yeah, you're yeah. supposed to write the next Avengers movie. I would suggest Marvel give him some help. Like put someone Man. else on that project because I don't I don't have any trust that he's gonna be able to pull off that story right now. Yeah, and this is the problem with Brian. I mean, whoever you put in there, they're gonna have their own vision. I don't know necessarily they're gonna go to the comic books and try to adapt anything. They're gonna put their own spin on it, and 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 I guess is it possible that Kevin has you know let other people take lead and i think this is a conversation we had prior brian about 
him t- trusting people and, and letting them do it, their thing. And it just looks like we're going into the ages of WB when they used to let people do whatever they want. And we get stuff that for us, the fans, we don't necessarily enjoy as much as we did the first I guess when you were hungry, when you were looking to build something, you built it. Now you're looking to build on top of it, but you put in just like whack stuff on top and not the real stuff that you used to use. I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah, and then they, yeah, and they, you know, as an example, like they, they've, con- I think they've, they've confirmed because Lubness confirmed this in the interviews that Namor is in Kang Dynasty. Okay, I don't know what so I don't that know what means purpose he's going to serve, but okay. Well, so this is my point, right? So Namor is a character, at least in the MCU, that was written by Ryan Coogler and was by and large pretty successful. Ryan Coogler's not involved with Kang Dynasty. So now you're handing that character to Loveness. And he said the number one thing he's excited about is to be able to write Namor. And I'm like, well, after what I just saw, like, I don't know that I want you to write Namor. And I don't really know what Namor's doing in this movie unless he's there to help the heroes in some way, which basically is just further indictment that they don't have a good hero lineup. But like, that's what I mean by like, I don't, I don't know, like, what that, that feels kind of like a rudderless move, even though I, I, I can't wait to see Tana Cuerta again. But yeah. I guess I wasn't expecting him to not be written at all by the people who had done Wakanda Forever. So I don't know. It's just it's stuff like that where you're just sort of like, ah, like who who's 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 along for the ride in, in this? And, and yeah, I think it's probably the answer is it's part Kevin. It's part the room. It's part everyone. But I know there's going to be know. people out there. Then I say, oh, you guys are complaining. You should guys be grateful, whatever. But it's like, listen, it's because of the, the numbers. These movies won't get made. Business. Oh, this is business. This genre won't continue yeah. or be as good as it was if the numbers don't. People just stop making these movies. Right? And, 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 and I said it a long time ago. Top Gun did a number on a superhero genre. It proved to these other studios that they can make movies that make a billion dollars if they're good well you, you saw know? spielberg at that that sound bite with steven spielberg and tom cruise i think it was like the baptist where he's like you saved, saved the theatrical industry well who do you think he what do you think he means by that comment he's basically saying you saved it from superhero movies being the only thing people can see now i i agree with you and when we did our preview list for this year it was telling that like look the highest ranked movie we had in the genre was Quantumania. And look what happened. It's not looking so good for what else we I mean, I think Guardians will probably be better than this movie, but I, you know, it, is it going to I don't know about bring, that, like, but let's I see. The other day, <laughs> I, didn't even realize, so I didn't even realize when they delayed the Marvels, they put the Marvels on the same opening weekend as Dune Part 2. And I was like, I told you, I was like, yeah. I ain't going to see the Marvels opening night. I'm going to see Dune opening night because I know that's going to be awesome. And I want to yeah. see the end of that story. Yeah, yeah. Doom Part Two is gonna be some. some it's gonna be an event, and to move the Marvels to compete, I, 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 I'm thinking Brian, the Marvels is gonna move. If they don't move, this is just gonna make Kevin look bad saying the stuff that he's saying about the Marvels, man. I don't know, Brian. Listen, they. Listen, what they what they ought to do for our entertainment is they should move the Marvels on the same weekend as Aquaman 2, because it's right around the holidays. <laughs> we got these two troubled projects. Let's have them go head to head. Just put them in the starting block. Yeah. And then I don't know, what do you want to set the bar at? Like 200 million bucks? <laughs> I don't know what you want to see. Who can actually that, crawl over the finish line? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I, I, they were to do that, forget about it. I think the superhero genre, you can put... The best movie coming out next month, I, f- I think it still does bad business because people are, I, Brian, people are getting tired. People are getting tired of waxed people up. I, people are getting restless. And I, we went over this. I actually think the, the, the breath of fresh air that's coming is actually going to be fall of 2024 because it's going to be DC goes on hiatus after Aquaman 2 for almost a year and they come back with Joker 2, which I know sounds crazy and off the wall, but I do think there will be anticipation to see that movie based upon what the first one did and and the knowledge that it's it's not it's just different right it's like out there it's so out there we got to see it and then deadpool 3 is going to come out right around the same time and so i feel like in a weird way those will be like these two r-rated projects 
that kind of people will be relying on to kind of like cleanse their palate. Um, because in the meantime, that's what we talk about when we talk about New World Order, we talk about Thunderbolts, like it's just not a lot where you're like, I can't wait to get there and see it anymore. No, Brian, I think the only movies that I'm really looking forward to this year, I mean, I'd, I'd, get, I'd have to go back to our show that we did for most anticipated, but I think one of them was Blue Beetle. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's a movie that I'm waiting for. And I did, did we even mention Flashpoint? I think we did it. I think it was but an honor. So you, so I told you, I said, I asterisked it and I, I said it should be on the rankings, but I'm not putting it in the rankings on principle. I think you did put it in the rankings. Look, I mean, after the trailer, the buzz yeah. is real, man. I think this thing, this if you're laying odds for biggest box office for a superhero movie this year, I think you would probably put Guardians 3 as the odds-on favorite, given it's a sequel. But I think Flash is, you should be getting, that's not going to be like a plus 1,000. That's like a plus 140 that that actually is the highest grossing superhero movie this year, the way the buzz is picking up. Yeah, I'm still, even though it's not a superhero, well, it kind of is, but in another world, Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers, that's going to be the big, the big I've heard, guy. I've heard, so I've heard polarizing reactions to people. Oh, yeah? thoughts on this. I've heard some, well, so one thing they did that's smart is 90 minutes long. I don't know if you heard that, 90 minutes in and out. So I've heard some early buzz that like, it's amazing and like, it's going to be, what you thought like it's gonna make a run at like box that like you can't believe <laughs> i've also heard the other side which is like i don't i don't get what this is doing or like what what is this what this is gonna what, who this is aimed for so yeah. we'll see man but you might be right it, it at least will look and feel different than what we've got <laughs> there's listen super mario brothers is a huge ip and it <laughs> has its fans brian whether it's bad or good, people will show up at least once. And there's a lot of people that know Super Mario Brothers and a lot of kids that watch Super Mario, that, that play Super Mario Brothers games. It's going to get people out. Yeah, I hear. And it could make a lot of money. I don't know about a billion, but I'll be surprised if it hit a billion. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below. I mean, we've been saying it. The MCU is in trouble. Um, and the people love this trying to tell us about this one story. It's like, yo, it's too late. Forget about what you did have is, is, is over. Um, and this is the guy that's in charge of doing, um, Kang dynasty. Like you said, Brian, maybe he needs some help. Maybe Kevin Feige needs to really sit down and go on another retreat. Before it gets, before things get written down on paper and gets ready for filming, because these jokes, whoever you got in there making jokes, and it's just not working anymore. It's over. That part of it is over. You got to get back to some seriousness, some good storytelling, in order for us to get to get back into it again. Yeah, so, you know, I, I wonder to that point. Disney has been so Marvel has been. They, they've always had their calendar. You know, they, they introduce the phases, they give you the projects. The one thing in the back of my mind that I'm wondering is when they put phase six up originally, and we know stuff is getting delayed and pushed out because Bob Iger has told us that. But when they put that phase six thing up there, they obviously had a lot of blank slots where they clearly would know some of what's supposed to go in those slots and they weren't ready to tell us. All this discussion we're having, I, as negative as it may sound like we're being, we're probably also aren't that far away from being reinvigorated. Like we're probably one great new project away from feeling like, oh, what's happening? I wonder if Disney fast track, if they fast track something that was supposed to be in phase six that they never announced to the public. I wonder if they bring something forward to try to inject some life into the calendar now that they see Because that when I look at what they already have, I just don't see it. I see Guardians is like, they'll make money, but it's the end of the road for the characters. So the other stuff between now and a Kang Dynasty, I just don't see the like, 
that's a billion dollars. That's at least 850. That's like in the bet. So I just wonder if we might see a new project pop up somewhere in here that has something bigger in it. And I don't just mean Spider-Man 4. I mean something else. I don't know. A mutant project? I don't know what that would be. I'm just trying to, you know. But if we get an, like it, it. if we get an announcement of a delay for Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars, that'll be an indication of what else they can put in that slot or fast track. My guess, the only thing that makes sense to me, Brian, is uh, Spider-Man. Because his involvement in Secret Wars is going to be, I think, huge. And I think they need to start with that. Um, or start the, the, the road towards that um, with Spider-Man. And that could be... Spider-Man is, the, is, is, a, is one that I'm... Is the one story that I'm most interested in, Brian. Uh, and if they can do something there to start us back towards secret wars if they delay it uh that would be ideal but let's see let's see let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nerd gem report the universe has judged you you asked it for a prize and it told you no